It's absolutely not. We've gone now nine quarters of football without scoring an offensive uh, touchdown. And that's just unacceptable. It, it's far below the standard of the offense that we've established. And, and uh, it's up to coaches and players to change that. And that's we've had, certainly had opportunities. Uh, we've been in the red zone the last two weeks multiple times. And yet we've struggled in that area. And, and uh, on a season, we're just 25% in terms of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Our opposition is 90% there, and you have really the difference of what's happened. So that's uh, uh, an area of emphasis. Uh, we've got to change it, and, and we are the only ones that can, players and coaches, to go back to work and to identify why uh, we have not been successful in those situations and to, and to go about changing those results. Looking at video, have you been able to determine just what is going wrong? Uh, it's not one thing or one player. Uh, it's, it's, it's missed opportunity in some cases, uh, breakdowns in other cases, uh, and, and you know that, that will stall an offense every time. You have to have 11 players that are on the same page uh, running the play that's called the way they, they practiced it. And uh, we're not getting that enough. So uh, again, we'll make uh, some, some changes where changes need to be made, but we'll find ways to get this correct. To start 0-3, uh, how frustrating is it? Very frustrating. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, uh, you know, you, you try everything uh, with your players. Uh, it, it's something we're unaccustomed to, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it's, it's certainly a position we did not expect to, to, to be in. And so we've got to take a, a good hard look at, at uh, uh, why we're, you know, why we're in this, this, uh, this spot. Uh, you know, we, again, the, the excuses of being young or inexperienced or all that doesn't work anymore. Uh, we've got to find 11 guys on both sides of the ball that can go out and, and make the plays necessary to be successful. We have not done that yet. There's a lot of football to be played in this season, and, and uh, uh, you know we need a win in, in uh, the worst way, as does Dixie State coming in here this week. So, uh, but uh, we'll, uh, like I said, uh, our players, uh, uh, you know, have character. They have pride, a great deal of pride, and, and uh, I have the confidence that they will respond. You guys definitely uh, in need of a win, hungry for a win. With it being homecoming on Saturday, do you feel like it puts added pressure to you guys? There's no added pressure when you're 0-3. You, you know that uh, it doesn't matter if you're playing in a you know a shopping mall parking lot and no one's watching you. You've got you've got to find a way to get a win. And, and uh, the good thing is we are at home. We're at home now for the next two weeks. It gives us a chance to you know not have to deal with the travel. Let uh, leave that to someone else and just really focus. Have a complete week, a full week and really focus on our game preparation, both mentally and physically, you know, because uh, uh, we've taken hits of both areas. Uh, you know, we're dealing with uh, a number of injuries as you can expect after three weeks. Uh, we did get Nick Riccadulli back and that was nice to see. Now we get him, need to get him loose a little bit. But, uh, you know, obviously it, it, uh, we're very disappointed with our start. Uh, and it's not the losses as much as the way we've played. When you look at where we're at statistically, that's so unlike uh, Humboldt State football that we know and, and, and uh, that has respect throughout this conference. It's why, our, why the conference coaches did pick us, even with a very young team, uh, as a preseason favorite because of the respect level that, that our program has had. But uh, other programs have made tremendous strides in a short period of time and, and uh, we're going to have to you know, really take a look in the mirror of what we're doing you know, to, to match up with uh, some of these other programs. And, and, uh, uh, right now, we, we've got to you know, we've got to find 11 guys, 11 healthy bodies that we can put out to that will get the job done, and I'm confident we'll do that. You mentioned before uh, Dixie State also winless. Uh, what's the game plan going up against them? Well, to be honest with you, I think when you're when you're in a situation that, that both programs are for us, it's going to be more focused on Humboldt State than it will be on Dixie State. Again, we've got some things that need to get corrected, and it's it, it's not uh, a lack of effort. It's not attitude issues or, 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 or disciplinary issues. It's just performance issues. We've got to play better. And, and uh, the way you do that is you go back to work with, with practice and, and uh, maybe you know streamline some things to, to be a little more basic in your approach. Uh, so you know that, that's certainly our approach this week. Yes, we respect Dixie. We'll get ready for Dixie. We'll prepare a plan for Dixie. But I think more important with where we're at right now is, is you know, that, that introspective look of looking at yourself and what we're doing well, what we've not done well, and making sure that we can make those necessary corrections. Homecoming, no matter what school it is, it's always special. 
Um, is it hard to keep the players focused? I know they have festivities during the week, but to, to keep them focused on you know the opponent on Saturday. It, it's not hard at all. That's our job. That's you know at the at the college level. I think you, you let everybody else worry about the the parades and the fireworks and the decorations. And, and our job is to prepare ourselves to be at our best come game time because we know that uh, that's what everyone is coming to see. That the, the, the game is the centerpiece. It's it's the focal point of, of uh, the homecoming activities. It's special. It's fun to be at a place where homecoming is special and, and such. Uh, uh, so it. it uh, uh, but for us, no. We we just have to get ourselves ready to play. And, and uh, like I said, we are in desperate need of a win, as is Dixie State. So you're going to have two very motivated, very hungry, very determined football teams playing on Saturday. All right, Coach, for almost uh, three quarters, your defense uh, shut out as a specific, especially when they had a, a talented running back at Terrell Watson. So what were the improvements that you've seen in your defense to allow you guys to have that? Well, shot? our defense is playing hard. They're playing, uh, you know, they're executing better than they did earlier in the season, certainly. We've got some players that are, you know, that uh, our first-time starters are going to have gained some valuable experience over the first three weeks of the season. Uh, we felt that Eric Powpow, our safety, had his best game as a lumberjack, uh, both Cameron Buell and Andrew Feaster, who had their first start at, uh, at linebacker, performed well. So we played a, a very solid first half defensively. Uh, the, the, the strange thing is, you know, there were no adjustments that Azusa made in the second half. The plays we stopped in the first half, we were unable to stop in the second half uh, frequently enough or often enough. So uh, again, but our offense has to help our defense out. It works together and, and we haven't been able to do that yet when the offense you know had a, had a better game in the opener against Simon Frazier it was our defense that kind of broke down and, and uh, this past week our defense you know played, played very well certainly for the first half and, and well enough throughout the game to uh, to help us uh, win the game but our offense didn't respond in the situations it needs to so we've got to get one of those games where both the offense defense and the kicking game uh, our, you know, our meshing and, and uh, yeah, our kicking game. You know, we recovered a fumble on a punt team. Uh, they roughed our punter a number, another time. Uh, we had some opportunities there with uh, additional possessions, but uh, uh, just were not able to get it done. Uh, Coach, you just you said your uh, touchdown percentage in the red zone was like 20, 25 percent, something like that. Uh, what do you guys need to do in the red zone to get that percentage up and score more touchdowns? So get the ball across that white line. I mean, it's really no magic <laughs> answer. You get that ball across that white line and find a way to do that. And, and uh, like I said, we, we've had breakdowns in that area. Uh, we're looking at, at our red zone offense to see what needs to be tweaked uh, or changed. Uh, to, to make us more effective in there. But uh, again, that's uncharacteristic. We've always been a, uh, an offensive team that, that has been highly productive uh, in the red zone, and, and uh, just just that's not the case right now. But again, there's a lot of football to be left. There's eight weeks of, of this season, and uh, you know, one, say, one thing you see is that uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of parity in this conference, and, and uh, Simon Frazier going down to Central, beating them last week, and and everything. So it, it, uh, it's going to be difficult for any team to go through this conference un unscathed. Uh, and, uh, you know, but, but for us, we focus on one week at a time. This week it's Dixie State. Thankfully we're at home and we'll have that support of, of uh, the homecoming crowd. But, uh, you know, in terms of, of, of why we've been ineffective in there, there's no, it, it'd be easy if there was one thing to point to. You change that one thing, but that's not the case. We just have not been able to get it done when needed in that critical area. That's, uh, uh, that's the job of, of uh, the offense to do that.